Hi ladies, tonight I'm going to be talking to you about how to drop the dress size in one week. It's not a ridiculous plan, it's actually a very doable plan, but what I'm going to go through with you first are the elements that um, are influencing your body and believe it or not there are two main ones which make up the main culprits of what is actually changing your body on a, on a chemical level. Now that can be to do with um, your nutrition, that can be to do with your hormones, that can be to do with the amount of stress that's going around your body, that can be to do with the amount of sleep you're having and the amount of exercise that you're doing. This particular um, formula, this particular element, uh, set of elements that I've put together, it's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. These are the major factors that are going to help your body to actually reinvent itself, to um, settle it down. And as I go through this evening, I'm hoping I cover everything. There's, there's a lot to cover and I'm going to make it very simple and very clear and very easy for you to understand because you have to know that there's an awful lot going on in your body that maybe you hadn't actually realised. Um, if anybody's listened to me before, you'll realise that I've said this many, many times before, even though when I was like super uber healthy with raw food and detoxing all the time, um, my body was still not at certain points losing any weight. What I realised later on was there's a massive amount of stress going on in my body. And I mean like a low level amount of stress um, that I was predisposed to. It had just been my kind of my way of reacting all the time. And as well as like going through a separation, becoming a single mum, having stress and worry. Now those things made a big impact on my body and my choices of food and how I digested my food. And now that's why I put together this particular jigsaw puzzle to make it as clear as pie, <laughs> to make it as clear, as clear, as clear as possible. The chemical reactions, what's going on in your body and how you can start to unravel that for yourself. I want you to be able to walk away and kind of go, that's the thing that was missing for me. So um, for the first things I want to talk about, are basically the hormones that everything's linked by the way the hormones are linked to your sleep which are linked to your stress which are linked to the exercise which are linked to nutrition there's not one thing that doesn't link every everything else it is very much a jigsaw puzzle um so as i talk about one thing i'll be bringing in the other elements and things as well the hormones here we have cortisol we have insulin there's estrogen as well now what happens is the reason that the body releases cortisol, if you don't know already, it's the main stress hormone. So back over to stress. <laughs> so the hormones that are running around our body, they get triggered by certain events and certain things that are going on. For example, um, I am predisposed to having quite a high level of stress um, from, from whatever, from being brought up in a household where I always had to watch my tongue, <laughs> quite cheeky, for being... Um, uh, just like if my mum shouted or screamed, I used to jump a mile. So I was predisposed to having certain um, certain reactions to certain things. So I was all, always a little bit always a little bit jumpy. And then, of course, as life went on, certain things came in, and you don't want those things to happen again, and you start avoiding them, and just an awful lot sort of like builds up, and you get very kind of stressy about certain subjects. So basically. Whenever you, your body feels like it's going to have to protect itself, whenever it feels it's going to have to either run very fast. <laughs> I've got a great story about that. If you feel you have to run very fast or if you have to stand up for yourself and fight, um, your body automatically goes into releasing cortisol. It's like, oh my God, stress, um, which starts off a chain reaction. Your liver releases glucose, so any, any sugar, which is basically sugar in your system, which is there for your emergency so that you've got the power to run and fight. Of course, you know all, or your, your digestion shuts down, it goes to all your extremes, so you, you're powered up, your muscles are powered up with all this sugar. Um, now, what happens, that's just a reptile brain response, by the way. Um, you can't help that. It's just it's just the way you are. But there are there are things you can do to relax that down so that you're not predisposed to reacting in that particular way. Um, when you don't use up that uh, the uh, the stress hormones, the insulin and the adrenaline and everything else that goes along with it, your body goes, oh, 
OK, we have to do something with this now. And what it does is it lay, lays down the fat in these particular parts of your body. So it actually starts laying it down in your sort of in your trunk area. This being because your major, major organs are in this trunk area and she is protecting you. Your body is doing her utmost to look after you. So she will protect you with a layer of fat. Also, when there's so many like toxins and poisons are running around your body and you haven't been able to use them up, um, she has to store those too. And if you're not going to use them, you're not going to be running or fighting. If you haven't done any exercise, you're just still stewing inside. Um, those chemicals are still running around your body. So, for example, also, if you've had a particular stressy day, it could be like the, the, the drive to work was bad, something bad happened at work. So again, we're going from stress back over to hormones because that's that's what triggers and clicks everything off. Um, you will have used up nearly all of your fuel, no matter what you've eaten, you will have used it all up, particularly if you've been putting yourself on stress of going on a diet. You've probably reduced a lot of your fats, reduced a lot of your sugars and just you're practically starving yourself. Your body is absolutely desperate and she will be sending you these signals that just say you have got to feed me. And she will crave sugars in particular because that just has a, um, it's a rescue mechanism. And so she will want your sugars. So that's why she craves the sugars and she craves the crisps and she craves the breads. She craves the wine. She craves all those kind of things. What's also happened is, and I've had clients like this, they've actually got no good bacteria in their gut at all because they've been living off sugars and because we're so sugar addicted. So basically what happens in your gut system is the, the longer you have been living off sugars, the more that your gut is infested with like what we call bad bacteria. And um, <laughs> they make us fart. They make us bloat. They make us um, have irritable bowel. They have all sorts of digestive problems. You probably know already I'm a detox diva. And all your... Um, all sicknesses, all illnesses, maladies, whatever, start from inside the gut. But even if you're eating really, really healthy food like I was, I was still probably eating way too much sugar and I was way too stressed. So the stress kills all the good bacteria as well. So in the end, you end up with these bad boys in there. You end up with these like Harley Davidson guys in there with like all they're craving is their next bottle of beer. They, they, they really are screaming for it. And unless you can break that cycle they are going to continue screaming for that. And like I said, most people that I've ever kind of worked with on a long term basis who are really struggling physically, weight or with their guts, it could be constipation or anything like that. A lot of it is to do with their gut bacteria. So where do hormones come in in all of this as well? So the cortisol, the adrenaline and the insulin. Insulin is being released because Insulin has to reduce the amount of sugars that are going around your body. So basically, if you're stressed, you're releasing, the liver's releasing glucose. You're stressed, your liver is <laughs> releasing glucose, you have pancreas releasing insulin. It's like this chain of events that goes on all day long. Eventually, the cells just kind of go, God, I give up. I've got, I've, I can't cope anymore. Um, and a lot of people get pancreatitis and things like that, but that's way down the line. But you have to know that your weight is showing you that there's something going on that you can take care of right now. Um, the insulin that is spiked throughout the day is not just spiked by sugar. It is spiked by anything that is a stimulant in your body. So the stress is a stimulant. Coffee is a stimulant. Sugar naturally is a stimulant. Um, your environment, those kind of things, toxins in your area. The, every single time you eat, your insulin is spiked. So if you're snacking and if you're having three meals a day and then you're snacking and then maybe you're having a coffee with milk, all again being digested, your digestion set up again. So it needs more insulin. And if you, this is, this is very, very interesting. Please make a note of this. If you have any insulin running around your body, whether it be from stress, from sugars, from eating too frequently to um, being spiked by coffees and things like that, your body cannot lose weight, especially if you are this kind of body code. It's absolutely impossible. So the solutions I will give you later on, one of them is like zero carbs, zero stress. It, it's like it works like a dream, but we have to be able to get you there. 
Right, what else is going on there? Oh, also, more fat in your um, more fat in your day will help you because that does not spike insulin, whereas the sugar spikes it massively. So if you're eating fat, um, your calories are still up, you've still got the energy, and you're lasting longer between meals, so you don't have to go, oh my God, I'm starving, I think, oh, let me think up, and you're actually gonna have to go and have another snack. So it's just a slightly different way of eating that actually helps your body start burning the fat that's in your body rather than looking for, for fuel elsewhere. All right, the second thing that we've got on our list here is sleep. One of the main things you have to know, and I tell everybody who ever comes on a detox retreat because they say, God, I've never slept so much in my whole life. Um, the body can only release the fat when it's in a state of relaxation. That's, and my phone's dipping down. That sounds absolutely bizarre, but it is very, very true. I know that when I went traveling around the world and um, my friend, my girlfriend and I, our bodies changed in three weeks, three weeks. We did absolutely nothing. We relaxed, we rested and all the rest of it. And our bodies changed more in those three weeks than I've done any, any other time. And I've checked in. I've checked in with my body and she's checked in with her body. We were able to speak to our bodies and kind of like now find out what's been going on. And it was purely the amount of stress or deadlines and those kind of things that were affecting. So we know that more fat is released via sleep. There have been studies done by this as well. So it's not just high in the pie, sunshine, sky. Um, more fat is released when you're resting, when you're sleeping. And that's why I'm going to talk about um, meditation things there as well. If you can get minimum eight hours, that's a minimum of an eight hours sleep a night, you're doing really, really well. There, there, is, um, there is also a study that says that if you go to bed and have your quality sleep before midnight, so from 10 until 12, there's a massive peak there where you go into a different kind of sleep, a deeper sleep that actually is so relaxing, but it's meaning that you have to be in bed by 10 o'clock. It's drastic for a lot of us. We're not able to do that. But I'm just telling you, if you get this right and you're able to do that, massive things will change. Your body can actually really, really respond very, very well to that. So sleep is very important. If you haven't been sleeping very well, it could also be because of the hormones that are running around your body. It could also very much be to do with the amount of sugar that's running around in your body and the insulin that's been spiked all day. And for whatever reason, there, you know, there's an awful lot of other things going on too that stops your body um, resting very well, especially at night time. And if you're waking up, say, like three or four o'clock in the morning, each organ in your body has um, a particular high peak time, clearing out time. I think the lungs is at about three o'clock in the morning. The digestion is about four o'clock in the morning. So if it's always at the same hour, let me know what hour it is that you wake up and I'll let you know what's going on with your body part of the body code um, stress we've mentioned a lot of stress to do with um, the hormone side of things so stress yes your body is releasing cortisol I mean massive amounts of cortisol which is a stress hormone which is very well known for laying down the belly fat if you look at somebody and you think oh god they're lazy they could do it losing a little bit of weight Often it has nothing to do with what they eat. It has nothing to do with how much exercise they do. It could very well be that they're just not coping. Whenever I start working with a client or have a, um, a body code conversation or a body scan with somebody, the amount of stress that's running through that body, I can feel and I can pick it up and I can understand where they are being influenced and affected. And stress can come from all sorts of different um, avenues can come from the people in your life, the relationships that you have, relationships with your children, relationship with your spouse, relationships with your mother and father, <laughs> relationships with the people at work. Um, so it can come definitely from people. And I think people really are kind of the thing that um, upsets the apple cart quite a lot. I'm just going to straighten my phone up here because I've got it somewhere different here so I can show you this. Um, other other thing to do with places, crowds of people, and if you're sympathetic, and if you're sympathetic and you are sensitive, maybe you're a bit of an empath, so you're picking up a lot of the stress from other people. And what I do is I teach you that it's not necessarily yours that you need to deal with, and you just need to sort of build your boundaries up a little bit better, so that you're not picking up 
all the stress that's going on around you, especially if you're traveling on the tube or traveling on a bus or in a busy office, you know, you can pick that kind of stress up with probably without you even realizing it. It's like, oh, oh God. Um, you know, I felt that, you know, you feel when you walk into a room, you can feel the atmosphere in a room. You know, if a row's been kicking off or something like that, or something's brewing, something's not being said, you feel that. So please don't doubt the fact that you can actually pick up what's going on around you. Um, even, by, even by listening to the news, the new, news broadcaster, negative films, scary films, those kind of things, they all trigger amounts of stress in your body. Um, these videos, for example, used to stress me out hugely um, a little while ago. And it's just, it's just not worth it. And I just had to get over it. So if there are certain things in your life that are stressing you out, it could be um, from something in your past. It could be abuse. It could be a breakup. It could be um, uh, all sorts of things to do with exes and partners. If you're hanging on to that, if you haven't been able to sort of let go of that in any way and kind of like walk under that bridge and just leave everything behind you and start rewriting your story from now, from today, that is going to be carried with you. You physically carry that with you. Stress also is um, majorly triggered by scarcity. I know this for myself when I was feeling, oh, I'm a single mum. I've got to put a roof over my, head, my boy's head. I've got to support them emotionally, financially and all the rest of it. I found it really worrying. I found it really worrying that I was solely responsible for them. I'm perfectly capable of doing that, but it's some some part of my in the back of my head I was absolutely terrified that I was going to fail with that a lot of things sort of plummeted I got into negative thinking I got worried about the scarcity I got worried about there wasn't enough I never had enough even though I had I had it all I was worried about the future that there wouldn't be enough coming in that kind of scarcity stress makes your body hold on to every single thing it's got and until it feels safe and until it feels that it's able to let that go it will keep on holding can you see that there are other things there um to do with your mental aspect your mind and um how you feel about things basic basically how you feel about things there's nothing as responsive to your than your body than what you feel and what you think can you see how that is actually having an influence on you physically and I don't just be my the weight but um other other certain aspects come up as well you can get the bad ache you get I've got sciatica other people get candida there's all sorts of different things your body's just talking to you but that's I'll go into that another time <laughs> um the last one to do with the, the the stress that I've that I've recognized is the stagnancy for example if you're waiting for someone else to do something and um, they're the only one who can do it, but you are waiting for them to do it. You've become very stagnant. I know um, for myself, I'd set a lot of things in place. I'd found this house, I run my business, I got the boys and organizing certain things, but I hadn't looked any further. I hadn't kind of said, right, what do I want now? What is it that I'm wanting now? I hadn't put myself out there and I hadn't created what I wanted to come to me in the future. So I was kind of stagnant. And I was waiting and I was um, blaming my ex and I was in that kind of place and things weren't working out very well for me. And I was kind of, I was locked between a rock and a hard place. I was locked. So I became very stagnant and I became into survival mode. And when I was in survival mode, everything was kind of like, oh my God, no, I can't do that. No, I can't do that. I can't afford this. No, I can't do that. No. So I became very stagnant. And it's being able to be free and move around and know what you're looking for, what you want instead that frees all that up. This helps stress enormously when you can start to um, feel very powerful in yourself and create your own boundaries. I did, um, it's called Peace With Food and it's a five week course that I have and at the moment it's on offer for 27 euros for five, year, for five weeks of actually getting into the state that you can relax your body 100% and feel safe. That's why I did that, because that's what I definitely needed at that time. Um, yeah, so 99% of the weight, the issues to do with weight, do come from stress. And you can see the link between hormones and sleep and stress. 
exercise I want to talk a little bit about as well. <clears throat> For example, um, movement. Movement just reduces the stress like so, so much. So every single day, without it being a bore, without it being a chore, but just really enjoying being outside and having some sort of movement. It could be to do with walking or yoga or something gentle. Never, ever exercise if you hate it. If you hate it, you're going to sprain an ankle. If you hate it, you're going to, you're going to hurt yourself. Your body is stressed and it doesn't want to do it and it's adding more stress to your body. Find something that you absolutely adore doing. Skipping, horse riding, um, swimming, whatever it is. But if you're doing something purely for the fact that you think it's going to raise your metabolism and you're going to be doing things in the opposite way and it's actually going to just add extra stress to your body. So be very careful with exercise that you absolutely love it. This should all be playtime. This should just be playtime for you. It shouldn't be. There's, there's no I have to. I have to get my running shoes on. I have to go for a run. I don't want to. That's not the way we do it. Every single day, just something very smooth, very easy. I mean, when I started running and I go in phases, everything with me is in phases. I go, well, I'm just going to go for a walk, but I've got my stuff on. And if I don't feel like it, I won't. And then once I've warmed up a little bit, I think, Oh, I kind of like the feeling of, of, of running a little bit. I am no way am I a runner, but I like the agility of it and I like being light on my feet and I like the speed of it. I'm a speed freak. So having a little bit of a jog every now and again when nobody's looking, um, that's what I like. So I take the dog out, find a, run, find a path on the top of a hill somewhere and it's good underfoot and I know where I'm going and I, I go and do that. That's enjoyable for me. It clears my head you can get out of your overthinking, over strategizing, over planning mind and get into your body more. This would help you enormously just to just forget everything else. This is why I help with the piece with food. It gets you out of your head and it gets you into your body. This is for busy, busy, busy women. You need it more than anything else. You've got adrenaline, you've got deadlines, you've got people dealing you're dealing with children, family, houses. <laughs> everything going on all at the same time it's just like raining down too much on you though no wonder sometimes things are not working for you if you are this body code and if you're predisposed to stress and cortisol and adrenaline and insulin fucking up your body um full body intensive once a week if you find something that you love to do god it could even be skipping i remember having the skipping rope out and I was like, out of breath, but I really found it fun. It really brought, brought me back to being a girl again. And that was, that was interesting for me. I enjoyed doing that, but I'd do that once a week and I'd really go for it. If I did it every single day, it became boring and it wasn't good for me. The body releases more fat when it's in the rest and recovery mode. Please remember that. But if you've done some exercise, you are definitely going to sleep better. Um, nutrition. This is, this is massive. OK, this is massive, but it's not the biggest issue. But it's not the biggest part, not the biggest element. It is equally as important to the stress and the hormones, equally as important to the sleep and equally as important to the exercise. But people talk a lot about nutrition and so do I. <laughs> um, basically, if your insulin is being spiked by stress and cortisol and the reptile brain and feeling that you have to be on guard the whole time and you are vigilant about what's going on, from for whatever reason, could be something in your past, could be something that's going on right now, could be a relationship issue. If you are feeling you're very vigilant and you're on the ball the whole time, mothers know this, you've got an ear the whole time. It's like where somebody is, what they're doing, what that noise is, do I need to worry about that noise? Um, you, you're on guard, you're on duty, as I call it, like 24 seven, you're always considering other people. So that's insulin being spiked because of these things, but insulin is being spiked most definitely by anything to do with sugar. What I didn't realize for a very long time, I was like, okay, well, I'll stop wheat. That helped, but any flour, anything with sugar in, and for me, even fruits, I've never particularly liked fruits. I've always found them really too sweet. So be aware that anything that stimulates your body even even some of the stavias or something like that, if you want to reduce your dress size in a week, like radically, these are the steps to take. 
reduce your carbs, your sugars to absolute zero. What we're going to replace that with is fat. We're going to replace that with all the beautiful, beautiful coconut oils, olive oils and those kind of things and avocados. We're going to just fill our plates up with those kind of things. Not worry to begin with about the amount of fats. And we're going to have a very good portion of delicious protein, whichever protein you like, cheese or beef or bacon or cheese. Now, they're not necessarily always my choices. You have to go with whatever choices you like. But you do really need something like three ounces per meal or six ounces per meal. You know, protein is very, very important. But if you eat too much protein, the body can actually change that into sugar as well. So be careful if you eat too much protein. I know when I started changing things around, I was still eating too much protein. So I can help you actually work out for your body type, your body size, how that actually works so that you, your body is not burning sugar anymore, but it's starting to work on the fat that you've stored. This is a fat burning. This is like taking away the bloating, making sure you're well rested so your body can release the fat so there's no insulin being spiked and all those kind of things. But your body becomes a real fat burning machine and we go in stages can't start here end up there in a flash it's it's educating your body and sometimes it can take a little bit of while before your body actually starts burning the fat rather than the sugar the reason i do the detox retreats is because it brings you into the ketosis state the ketosis state is the name scientific name for your body when it's burning fat burning fat for fuel every other state is to do with sugar and your body has to do like a 180 degree shift to start burning fat for fuel and trusting you that you're going to give an enough fuel and it will start oh god there's no sugar there's no sugar there's no sugar there's no sugar there's there's no glucose oh well we've got fat okay we'll burn fat that's what happens and it can take a little bit of while i've seen ladies on my retreat it can take 72 hours it can take some ladies longer than that depending sometimes on their metabolism how long they've been sustaining themselves on a lot of sugar. Um, it can take a little bit longer. All right, so is there anything else I want to say about that? The solution, the big solution here, to drop one dress size in a week, to drop one dress size in a month, to just drop, start dropping dress size is to start using your fat for fuel. First of all, these are the rules. <laughs> these are the very simple things that you need to be able to do. Stop spiking your insulin. Every single time you eat, your insulin goes up. Every single time you get stressed, your insulin goes up. If there's any insulin around your body, remember what I said, your body will not let go of the fat. Your body is holding on because it's in a state of fight and flight. That's why sleep is so important because when you're not, you're rested, you feel safe. And your body can release. The longer you can sleep, the better. The fewer meals you eat, the better. So, for example, if you were eating like three meals a day, plus you were eating snacks, try and reduce that down to just three meals a day. And then at some point, just have two massive meals a day. And that reduces it like by half because you're not spiking the insulin every single time you eat. Um, also keeping proteins, good proteins, good fats, zero carbs, and I mean zero. Even if it's on um, something that's, um, all the bought sauces and all those kind of things, they've got sugar in them. Vegetables. Vegetables release the fat in your body. They take the fat out. That's why we're actually going to be recommending something like 7 to 10 cups of vegetables a day. Now that is a huge salad. Luckily, I love salad and I love vegetables. And there's lots of different things that you can do with your salad and your vegetables. And you know what? It's only until the major amount of your weight goes. And then you can start experimenting and you can start changing things around a bit to maintain it. We are just talking about dropping a dress size. This is, this is like serious stuff. Sleep then. Sleep. Eight hours. Eight hours would be minimum. Before 10 o'clock would be ideal. In an ideal world. Who can do that? Anyway, that's the way it goes. And um, remembering that your body releases the fat when it's in real rest. And that's why I teach about meditation. And I do have that course, Peace With Food, five weeks at 27 euros just at the moment. 
which gets your body to learn how to relax and it's a practice. I've been doing this now for like three or four years, meditating, getting into the practice. When I first started, I was just like, yeah, well, whatever. But um, it really, you have to be able to do that and listen to your body and relax, get out of your head and give your body a chance to relax. I'm known as the bulldozer. I basically can kind of go in there, shift things around, keep on going for long, 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 long. But after a while I crash and burn. I actually have to meditate now in the morning, in the afternoon, and usually I get a very, very good night's sleep. Like a log, they say, I don't move. <laughs> Wake up in the same position that I went to sleep in. If you are struggling with stress, um, start to meditate, get good sleep. Avoiding the sugars will help enormously because it'll stop you being so so jittery. It really affects your moods, sugar, as well. It's it's like really makes you irritable. Um, very irritable to people. <laughs> very irritable to your children, to your partner. You're just like, hmm, just respond. Um, the places, your worries of finances and things like that it help. And if you can reduce those, find a way to work those out. I have people in my group every now and again who actually can help you get the mindset set for better finances as well. They've helped me enormously because um, I was in that place a couple of years ago when I was worried about finances and the future for my boys. Yoga, walking, anything that de-stresses you. We don't take this seriously enough. Those hormones and everything that are running around your body will eventually wear you out. You'll, you'll have really serious adrenal fatigue. You'll have real serious problems. If you keep eating the sugar the way that is affecting your body is pre diet you'll be diabetic. At the moment, you've probably got an awful lot of the systems, symptoms that are pre-diabetic, pre like the eyesight goes, the bellies, the um, all sorts of things just, just diminish. Exercise, so um, regular, easy exercise every single day. There, it's there for grounding you. Take your shoes off, walk barefoot on the grass, go out in nature, hug a tree, whatever brings you down, whatever brings you out of the stress and the life that you have been living. And uh, once or twice a week, find something that is a full body, very intensive, makes you lose your breath, but you think is just hilariously funny, like skipping or something like that. I do it with the kids, so that's always good fun. Um, and the rest periods are very, very important. So have a very high active day and the next day rest, maybe two days rest, and then have another high active day. Find something you love. That would be my my biggest tip here about exercise, it never works unless unless you absolutely love it. You're never going to keep it up. You're never going to do it. Nutrition. So we're talking about 10 cups of vegetables a day. I mean, like a cup is an American size, but I, I find that quite a, quite an easy way. I don't limit my vegetables, by the way. I just I have a massive salad and then I put a little bit of whatever the six ounces or, or whatever the protein is. So that's cheese or eggs or um, something like that on there and um, lots of good lots of good fats <laughs> and um, okay here's something that speeds your metabolism up I don't know whether you know this or not sea kelp that will speed your metabolism up but it also helps you to re um, reduce your stress levels so that would be a good one to have potassium which you will get in all your vegetables and things as well please make sure you have a lot of greens greens are great for reducing stress and um re lowers the result re lowers the insulin in your body so that would that's that's amazing that really is good so have a lot of greens if you're not already find a way and find some greens that you absolutely love make sure you vary them though leafy green vegetables and things like that and they have something on the leaves so that if you have the same one every single day, like spinach, eventually it will be quite toxic. You really need to kind of change it around rocket or um, uh, spinach. What else is there? Mash. There's all the lettuces. So, yeah, have a, have a look at all the different ones. If you want any questions answered, please ask me. Um, remember to drink a lot of hot water and water. Add a little bit of extra salt in there. Make sure your salt is not iodine or anything like that, but it is actually not table salt, but it's like Himalayan salt or sea salt. They have like 48 different sea salt memories in there, which are brilliant for your tissues. You need to get those minerals. 
apple cider vinegar is also very good to sort of help your stomach digestion um, I'm a blood type A I have very low stomach acid so it's good for me to take apple cider vinegar it helps my digestion no end what else in there B vitamins also not very well found in vegetarian diets and things like that but they lower the stress levels there's a lot of different um, benefits of having some of these B vitamins and things like that as well and I don't normally just recommend one particular mineral because you need the whole range that's why I use a lot of Himalayan salt and everything and I take baths in Himalayan salt and I drink water with a little bit of Himalayan salt in it every day too because it just replenishes the minerals especially when I'm doing something like this if you're ready to discover your particular body code so now in other words maybe you've got this kind of fat but not this kind of fat or you've got this kind of thing going on but not this kind of thing or hips and bum and those kind of things um, I'm doing body code diagnosis calls for the next week two weeks next week I'm going to be doing a five-day challenge in my group women winning with weight about every single one of these subjects and I'm going to go into more depth about what's going on every single day so one day will be to do with hormones to do with being menopausal to do with being infertile and how your hormones are being affected um, I'm going to have a day on stress I'm going to have a day on um, exercise nutrition sleep um, and those kind of things all the kind of things that we can do to help ourselves I'm going to be going in through that day by day next week but look a body code tells you what kind of body you've got and what is actually affecting you we go through a checklist so that I can find out all the certain questions that you need to answer. You walk away knowing what your body code is and what's influencing your body. I'm so happy to do those. Um, yeah, so we go through a checklist and it finds out what your particular body code is for you. Because it's not going to be the same as your next door neighbour because she's predisposed to something else. You're predisposed to your kind of level of stress which is very different to somebody else's experience. Even your sister will have, you know, raised in the same house as you, will have a different perspective on something that will stress you out, but it won't stress her out. That food affects her, but it doesn't affect you. No two people can do the same thing. So it's really cool to find out what your body code is. You know, it could be to do with your metabolism. It could be to do with your hormones. It could be to do with your menopause. It could be to do with all sorts of things. It could be to do with you've been having problems with your weight since you were like 12 years old it could you know there's this there's this, this stuff this stuff and we'll find all that out with the, with the checklist and i'll be able to help you get pull all those through look i hope this has been in helpful has been helpful for you there's always so much more to know when it comes to our darling bodies and how we can actually treat them and watch them just get better and better and we can feel we start to feel like a million dollars and we can have just the best relationship with our bodies with ourselves and we can start having the Midas touch on everything because oh god that works oh that works oh that works and we can start giving getting people into our lives that we actually love and adore we can just cut out all the stress that's what happens when you start looking at one thing you start being able to sort of have the Midas touch with everything you can manifest the best partners you can manifest the best children <laughs> <laughs> and your stress levels just go down wouldn't you wouldn't you rather that and be able to have the Midas touch and everything and you know how you handle things and know what you want at any given moment thank you so much for watching thank you for watching the replay I'm going to be putting this on YouTube and I will be taking it off the group this evening so um, if you have signed up and you're here and you know why you're here because you want to learn how to lose a dress size be it in a week or two weeks or a month or two dress sizes a big <laughs> kilo bag of soil whatever it is that you're carrying around with you I understand I know I see you I hear you any questions please let me have your questions and I'm super happy to give you the answers and I share those answers because you are not alone you are not the only one dealing with this and it's not your fault. There are lots of different elements to be put into play that just make it all come together so much easily. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. Any advice I can give you, I will give you. I know how sad it is when you're in a body that you just do not like and it, you seem it doesn't work for you. 
All right. Have a good evening and I'll speak to you again next week. Don't forget next week I'm going to be talking to you about the challenge. So every single day we'll be looking at one particular aspect and I'll be asking you questions that will help you understand what's going on for you and what's triggering you. All right. Good night. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.